Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me again for another review video. And today we're looking at the Krios Battle Tank from the Mechanicum Army. Um, this is the first of the new Mechanicum tanks to be released. It was a, actually it was the first Mechanicum tank ever released by Games Workshop uh, or Forge World. Uh, and it was, as you can see, it was quite unlike anything that had come before it. Uh, so let's have a look at the miniature and then I'm going to talk about the tactics uh, and the capabilities of this vehicle in the game. So let's uh, get a bit of a closer look. So I've had this, uh, I've had this a few, a few years. This model, um, I picked it up. This was actually one of the first handful that were released. Um, Games Workshop sold them at uh, Salute 2014, and they only had a about 10 or so and I was lucky enough to get one that day so yes a, an early an early release model as you can see it's it's a richly detailed model um, there's a lot it's a, has a very skeletal appearance uh, not uh, layered in heavy armored plates at all um, you've got all this interior this detailing within the track unit of power plants and uh, gearing got the rear I like this feature here you see even Mechanicum are sensible, uh, and remember you need a towing lug. The track units are all single piece uh, castings, so uh, there's no tracks to put on, thank goodness. Um, then you have the lightning cannon itself. The lightning cannon has this um, cowling that covers it, of all these uh, cooling vents perhaps. If we take that away. This is uh, not fully stuck together yet, so it's to make it easier to paint because it's a very complex three-dimensional model. You've got these uh, crazy looking cogs, perhaps they're part of the elevation and declination system of the lightning cannon. Uh, and then at the back, we have, I don't know if you should call it a, a throne or a crew position where a tech priest um, the Tech Priest driver is located, uh, and there's some wonderful Mechanicum detailing. And indeed, uh, looks like uh, looks like uh, the Navigator from the film Alien. This guy looks like he grew out of the seat. Let's just take him out to get a closer look. I, I, this is a lovely detail model. I mean. It, it just it's pure pure mechanic. I mean, this is there's barely a human left on this guy. His arms look completely cybernetic, and perhaps just underneath that cowl there might be the hints of what could be an original human face there. But who knows? Let's pop him uh, back in his tank, back in his throne. Right, so uh, let's take these off so we can actually see uh, the innards of the tank. So we've got this nice, uh, this nice internal detail into the track unit. Uh, this is a flare shield mount, a flare shield generator. And you can see the whole thing is very skeletal and lightweight. And the whole of the tank is built around this enormous lightning cannon um, and of course there's no turret so it can only shoot in the direction it points however when we get onto the rules you'll find that that is a hardly a limitation with this intriguing vehicle let's put those back on oh actually one thing I will show you um, so these are the track units um, the there's some quite uh, some Quite a bit of filling I needed to do on the inside of these, as you can see, and they're both they're both the same um, to make it look uh, to to smooth off lots of poorly fit, like roughly finished parts. I've got two of these Krios tanks, so this one and a Veneta, and they're both the same. So yeah, it's probably a bit of work. You're going to need to do a bit of work on that. I don't know if uh, subsequent copies were better cast in that regard. And um, this is, uh, I think, like all the Mechanicum vehicles, this was sculpted um, by, by Stuart Williamson. And he's uh, 
certainly done a fantastic job of creating a look for the mechanic and vehicles. He did the Krios, uh, the Triaros, the um, Ordinatus Minoris, so the Sagittar and the Alata, uh, and then mo most recently um, the Macrocarid Explorator. There is one thing I don't like about this model, uh, and that's these peculiar cartwheels, or perhaps that's balance wheels. These are supposed to um, that's a nice Mechanicum boss in the center. These are supposed to mount on these lugs here, like so. I don't like them. I just think I, I it, it just doesn't, I don't get them. I think what I will do is I'll probably cut out these bosses and just stick those on here to serve as a nice detail point. But you know, I, I can see that some people will like those. Let's do a quick size comparison. So as we're talking Mechanicum, let's uh, get a suitable comparator. And here we have a Talax Combat Cyborg. He's on a 40 millimeter base. He's quite a large model. And you can see it's a it's a you know an average size tank, probably not a million miles away from the size of a Predator. And uh, for a comparison against a human, here we have a Solar Auxilia Laser Rifle Trooper, uh, and there's a human comparison too. Talking about themes and styles, before I move on to the actual rules review, um, let's, I just want to show a nicer uh, comparison around some detail that was done. Now the Talax we have here was armed with a light, is armed with a lightning gun, uh, and this was a these Talax were the first Mechanic and models that Forge World released, and when they came to do the Krios with a lightning cannon, um, they've uh, scaled up the style and look of the Talax's lightning gun into this enormous weapon very nicely as well. So I do like uh, I do like the continuity of style there. Okay then, so let's move on and talk about the rules for the Krios battle tank. Um, for my rules referencing, um, I'm using the Horus Heresy Mechanicum Tagmata Army List book. Um, so I'm referring to this as opposed to any of the rules published in the black books. So the Krios Battle Tank uh, is a Battle Tank Squadron option in the Heavy Support category. Uh, for a single Heavy Support slot, you can take three Krios Battle Tanks. Um, the Krios Battle Tank um, is armed with a Lightning Cannon as standard, and it costs 125 points. Its key stats are Ballistic Skill 4, and its armour is Front 13, Side 12, and 10 on the rear. Um, so, in terms of armour, it is comparable to a Predator, slightly superior. Um, however, it is tougher than a Predator, and we'll come on to that in a moment. It is a fast tank, um, which is unusual, um, but very um, very handy. Um, and it has a falling war gear as well as a lightning cannon. It has a searchlight, uh, blessed auto simulacra, so you can recover hull points, uh, lost hull points on over six each turn. And then it also has a flare shield. So the flare shield enhances its survivability considerably by reducing um, the strength of non-D attacks by one and blast templates by two, uh, as long as they originate in the front arc. So yes, it's a, um, despite looking unarmored and flimsy, it's actually uh, quite tough. Uh, and then it has one special rule, which is a galvanic traction drive, and that just forces a reroll on failed dangerous terrain tests. So, this uh, so without for its standard points, uh, you get a fast tank um, with a reroll on dangerous terrain tests. So it's perfect for charging around difficult battlefields uh, and also um, crashing through things like ruins as well. And I'll talk a bit about a bit about that later. Um, right. So the lightning cannon. So the lightning cannon is is. Want to know its its only weapon? It has a range of forty eight inches. It is strength seven, AP three. It has a large blast, uh, and it has several special rules as well that set it apart. Um, it it has rending and shred. So uh, with the high strength of seven and the shred rule means you're uh, highly likely to in just norm any typical infantry targets. You'll normally be rolling on a, a two plus with a re roll of a two. And the AP3 means most troops will not get an armor save against this. 
Um, the rending rule gives it a chance against tougher save models such as Terminators uh, and also means it can always threaten the heaviest of tanks uh, such as Land Raiders. Um, even with its standard, with its strength seven weapon, you can still score a penetrating hit. But I think really the lightning cannon is is designed for killing heavy infantry, you know, and it will work very well against lighter infantry as well. Particularly, I mean, it will rip solar logs of these to bits because um, um, they won't be able to take feel no pain rolls either against strength seven. Some additional kit: you can get extra armor, a hunter killer missile, smoke launchers an anarbic claw for seeing off infantry assaults uh, and up two Volkite Sentinels or up to two Volkite Sentinels. Volkite Sentinel is an independently targeting Volkite Charger uh, so it's in effect a point defense weapon. So if you you know if you do want a bit of extra firepower you can do those. I, I probably steer clear of them normally. Um, I think the best use of this tank is as a flanking vehicle keeping away from infantry. Um, so, in terms of how I use this in my games, um, it's probably best if I give you an example of, I've, I use this extensively in, in, in the Istvan 3 campaign I fought um, using a survivor, the um, Caleb Decima Survivors Force, um, because this is actually, the Krios is available for that army. Um, and the, the fast rule combined with um, the galvanic traction drive makes it great for charging around ruined cities. You just smash through buildings and you're very rarely going to fail, um, fail your dangerous terrain test. Coupled with its main gun that's very good against uh, space marines uh, and its long range and blast makes it, it's a very good harassing flanking tank um, to fight enemy infantry and uh, yeah my, uh, <laughs> I've had a lot of success with it, and um, my opponents uh, tend to find it a. It's quite a frustrating thing to fight because it's also it's a, it's, a, it's tough as well on account of its flare shield, and its fast moving and long range. Its fast movement speed and long range means you can normally keep the flare shield aligned forward. Um, thinking just about tactics and synergies as well, um, an obvious. Uh, Obviously, this go this probably goes well with an auto reductor force. Um, it's an important part if you're playing the survive the Istvan three survivors force led by Caleb Decimer because you have quite limited uh, troop choices. You do you can take the Krios. Um, I mean, it does stand on its uh, stand alone quite well. Um, a warlord that would link in well with it would be an Archimandrite. Um, who would confer the it will not die rule onto this tank, uh, which would replace uh, blessed also simulacra, so they'd be recovering lost hull points on a five or a six. So um, there you have it, the Krios battle tank. Um, I think this is a it's a fascinating looking vehicle. Um, it's it's an effective uh, effective unit in the game. Um, there's nothing quite like it in terms of tanks in 40k, so it's a well worth a look if you have a mechanic and force. So I hope you've enjoyed listening to this review. Um, please leave any observations down in the comment section. Thank you very much for listening, and I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.